Good morning. Uh, this is Charles Baldwin calling in from the Brick Bottom Gallery. I am here with Pierre Gustafsson to do a little chat and uh, show and tell. Uh, the current show is Urban Sketchers, uh, which is a group of people who sketch in urban environments. Uh, generally urban, but we've been known to sketch the bucolic countryside. And the countryside as well. Okay. Um, we're going to spend a little time sort of going into the show and hearing some of the stories and Pierre is doing this on StreamYard and streaming live. I'm doing this on the Zoom and we'll be recording it so that it goes down in history. Um, thank you for bearing with us as we deal with the technology. We deal with the correct buttons. Exactly. Press the correct, press the correct button. Otherwise we have to do take. Okay. All right. And so here we are in the gallery with Pierre Gustafson uh, and the Urban Sketchers sign. And um, this is the, <laughs> and Pierre is streaming and showing me. So this is a little bit of everything here. A little bit of everything. Okay. So the show was set up so that the first thing you would see as you walk in the, I'm having a, this app here, tech, what did they call that one? What's her name? Boop, fill out the uh, wardrobe malfunction. I'm having a, a <laughs> function here. So the first thing you see as you enter the, the gallery is the Urban Sketchers sign directly ahead of you. And underneath is a very welcoming bench. Yes, uh, I like that there's a seat. Actual furniture down here rather than the cold to sort of make it seem homey. Well, I also think that, you know, the show is so dense and so deep. It's nice to have little breaks. Or you call them dense. Yes, you <laughs> sit down. So anyway, Urban Sketchers, this was a sign that, uh, that I started to make and realized that the Urban Sketchers is a Etc. And uh, we had fun with this. And to the left of that sign is the question who are the urban sketchers? Well, That's an excellent question, Pierre. Well, who are, who they? are the urban sketchers? Well, we, are, we are meaning a number of people. In this case, there are more than 50 people represented in the gallery. The gallery is showing 1,001 sketches on the wall. So far. So far, but I'm adding more 1,002 as of this morning. So what I started out with the first grouping, which is this biomorphic organic shape, um, because I didn't want to have it be too organized and too regular. I wanted to have it have a little bit of a chaotic feel to it. Um, chaotic isn't the right word. Organic feel to it, I think. I wanted well, to and you know, I, I know you sort of reacted to the word dense. And what I like about the word, the, the density of this is that the images themselves are like a sketchbook because there's so many of them. And when you have a sketchbook, they're filled with things that you like and things that you don't, but each page is a moment. And there's a part of that with this show as if the entire sketchbook has exploded onto the walls. That's true. And the, when you said moment is, it's a temporal, one of the things, one of the rules, of Urban Sketchers Worldwide has a, some rules we follow in their manifesto. One of them is to capture the place in time, you, you're, you're recording what you see. It's very much like a diary almost. We're not necessarily trying to make profound art. We're making, we're recording like a newscast might do of an event. So on this first one, I show drawings that we did on site, which included us sketching. 
So says, all says sketches of you sketching. Sketches as well. Of, they're not they're not selfies. They're otherings. They're uh, <laughs> is that the word? I think back in the old days we just called them like portraits. We called them portraits in the olden days. Okay. Right. So that's here. So that sort of introduces us. The second part of the thing is um, each one of us has our own style and point of view, and so on this particular grouping. I included as many different kinds of art as I could from very simple watercolors to more complex watercolors to very uh, bold uh, crepa. I was going to say, it looks like we have crayon and pencil and ink, yeah. ink with a pen, ink with looks like a brush. Um, a collage and a, another malfunction. Uh, needs more tape up there. Uh, this is one that I did, a sort of a collage. We went to the Fog Museum of Art and I decided you know, I needed to focus. There's so many things to see there. I thought, well, I'm just going to go around and, and draw the TNA um, on the nudes. So we've got some T's and we got a couple of A's. Got some there. T's and A's. Excellent. T's and A's. Every sketchbook should have a little sex. A little, a little sex in each one. Here we have examples of other drawings, some actual sketchbooks that the artist did not want us to manhandle. So rather than having them out and searchable, I have them open to the page they chose. And so anyway, anyone, all of us have a different style. Well, almost all of us. Here you see a pair of Spaniards uh, who were visiting Boston. And the one on the top is mother, the one below is son. Mother, son, mother, son, mother, son. So whether it's nature or nurture or both, they have it in spades. It's interesting to capture a family. You know, I come from a creative family. My mom was uh, someone who drew. My uncle was someone who drew. And when you put our stuff together, there is a similarity. Genetic. Uh, yeah, it's not the same, but that you can kind of sense that, like, we're of the same school yeah. uh, or the same family. My, my dad and I share a lot of drawing styles as well. Also, the fact that we draw in so many different styles. I, I have a feeling that these mother and son draw almost that way all the time. They don't they right. stray from the straight and narrow. That's or, what they do. The mother is, is straight and narrow with the little clabbering. The son is a little bit more jiggly and narrow, but they're both narrow. Now, I don't mean that in a negative way. They have a very set aesthetic. A right, a specific type of uh, way of capturing the image through line and a little bit of color, but even how they draw the figures yeah, have a similarity to them. Very, uh, I think they're both, at least one is an architect, I think, and the other one, I think, studied architecture, so they have that architect point of view of rendering. Right. Um, we have a number of architects in the group and they like to, I think, get outside and draw without having to design a building. It's very relaxing to go on these things because we're placed in a location that we normally may not pick ourselves and we're given a little bit, just a tiny bit of structure. And then the rest of it is just relaxing and having fun, I think. Here we went to the ICA here in Boston, and we're, we're told how to attend these things via Facebook. So we get an announcement, we find out what day and time it is, and then we go to draw for two hours. So there's people that you recognize and know in the group, but there are also people who will show up. So a visitor in town who follows Urban Sketchers Very could much, yeah. choose to partake in on a Saturday or Sunday morning. Be. on Saturday, you said, you promised. That's right. No, I'm, this is, I'm, uh, with this show has come a realization of who Urban Sketches are. Now, of course, like every club, I want in. You want in, you want in, okay. 
Well, when we're done drawing, we draw for two hours. And when we're done drawing, we spread out the drawings we did at the predetermined location. We look at the drawings and we pose for our, our selfie, our, 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 we, your group selfie. Well, group selfie. Group shot, group, just a group photo. Our, 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 it's I like our, our, our <laughs> selfie. Our us we. We, we. we pose for our us we. And then we, the second part of this, the, being a member of this group, is you have to, you're encouraged to share your drawings with the world. And their motto is to share the drawings, share the world one drawing at a time. Oh, I like that. Works. So, speaking of others, Yes, it was when you were hanging this show. And again, you mentioned how the show's not really over. It's got a thousand and two drawings. It will have more. When you were hanging this and the blue shapes went up first, which was kind of, uh, you, you know, what are they? But you hung this globe early on. And it's really what got me asking about Urban Sketchers, that it's not just like your local group, but it is a series of local groups that are across the globe. Across the globe. This grouping here represents people who visited Boston for a short time, sometimes just a layover of a few hours on the way back to China. This person came in and drew, and I found the person on the worldwide uh, urban sketches group. I did a search for Boston and found people who, uh, who were visiting here, and I said, could you please uh, be, you know, be included in the show. And here's a little secret. Many of the, or, or some of, many of the drawings on this wall, because they are from people from all over the world, um, I, I had them send me a high resolution print of image, which I printed on different kinds of paper to have, have a versatility that I wanted. And um, I think even if they were, Maybe a little smaller than real life. Some of them actually might be a little bigger than real life because I don't see what the drawings are. Right. Uh, they they do convey a good ninety five percent, I think, of what was actually there. In addition to people from all over this place coming to visit us, right here, we're right here. We who are right here visit other places, so. Uh, here's one guy who's uh, in Boston, but he's visited South America and drawn it many times. Um, we have a, every year there's a international symposium uh, where the urban sketchers in the, uh, the big tower, the urban sketcher tower, wherever that is, decide where the, the thing will right. be. They will go there. Yeah, they will decide what the thing will be in the dates and people for thousands of people descend on that city and draw. Oh, nice. I like that. They don't buy the souvenirs. They don't, they go to a restaurant and they draw, they don't eat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but well, but, but they, sometimes they might have to take a cab to get there. Yeah. You know, they're spending some money in the area. So we do have an economic push. To <laughs> So here's the, so the rest of the show is set up by venue. So um, the Longfellow House, which is a bright yellow house in Cambridge, is, was where we met. And as you can see, one guy drew the owner, one guy, two people drew the actual structure, someone drew the flowers, someone drew the bunnies in the garden. Um, I drew on yellow paint swatches, because I knew the house is yellow. I drew uh, architectural details on um, yellow uh, paint swatches. So even though you come together and you choose a site, what the urban sketches do based on who's there, is that sort of your personalities are revealed by what you choose to draw. Yes. It's not like everyone sits down and then we're going to draw a house, because obviously uh, even in this context, some people drew the house, some people drew Longfellow, or I don't know if there's a statue of him there's there. There's a statue, yes. Okay. He was not, uh, just <clears throat> that was like just on the rocking chair. Like, I'll just put a bearded guy and call it Longfellow. No, I asked him if that was if that was actually there, and he said yes. It's a. I don't know where the statue is. It might be 
in, in the back by the, in the garden somewhere, I don't really know. But it is interesting what we choose to draw. Yeah, and particularly the, the, the bunnies here are so interesting because I would imagine it's not necessarily what you would think when you, know, you think of it. Like Henry I'm Wadsworth. going to draw, oh, right, Longfellow's house and you end up with bunnies and some monuments and an interesting scale since the bunnies are larger. Than they're the they're quite huge, they're, they're quite large bunnies. Um, over here, uh, here we have, we, we often draw inside a, a building and it's rainy or cold weather. So the Smith Student Center at Harvard Square is where we draw and where we drew that day. You don't have to draw, you can go outside and draw the Harvard Yard but, or Harvard Square. But uh, I drew inside and I, I am a fast drawer. And I did about 10 drawings in the two hours. And um, this collage I made, which is very much like how I built it. Yes. Here, it sort of comes naturally to me to jumble things up. I made, uh, I included two or maybe even three trips to, to this in one piece. You had drawings of pen and ink on sort of tracing paper vellum. There was drawings on my iPad and I had this frame that was stainless steel, which uh, is what the building is made of. So it fit the frame. To this side, we have the Harvard Lampoon, uh, building as drawn by two different artists. These two are the same. That was a third. Inside the um, Smith Center, you see various people's renditions of the people and the plants on the walls and people again. And it is interesting. People that like drawing people, the people, people that like drawing buildings will consistently draw the buildings. And eliminate the people. And when sometimes eliminate the people, sometimes add them in. Um, here is Harvard Yard. So the, the Kodak picture, the picture you, you, you would take if you were a tourist in Harvard Square would be the out of town news uh, uh, building right in the middle of this island, this traffic island. And it's quite picturesque. Other people drew other storefronts, architectural details, uh, people, um, uh, cafes. Yeah, this is, it's, it, Harvard Square has obviously got a lot going on because here we have uh, the classic sort of New England brick, the academic institutional brick. Yeah. But we also have this great Art Nouveau um, front. What building is this? I know this building. It's not Lovett and Pierce, it's something else. Um, yeah. I don't remember what that is either. But I, it's like, oh, I have to go back to Harvard Square and remind myself what building that is. But the, one of the things about Harvard Square that is so fascinating is that the world kind of goes through Harvard Square. It's the university, it's the visitors, it's tourists, it's people who work in there. And so it's such a people place, people coming and yeah, going, people coming and going. Musicians. You've got buskers, you've got people just hanging out. You've got the crazy people. Um, Everybody's there. Everyone's it's there. The, the world yeah, goes through Harvard there. Square. In, in the Smith Center, it was very difficult for me to concentrate because there was a Bible study group in there, which I think should be illegal. <laughs> they were talking very loudly about some verse or other, and um, it really Turned, turned me off. So, well, so this, now we'll go over to the garden. So the see Boston Garden and the statue of George Washington. So here's the Boston Common, uh, the Boston Public Garden. And I also included drawings of the Boston Common uh, because I didn't have enough of the Boston Common. One of the things I did was I, I, I hung every item that I was given. Uh, this group is very democratic. And uh, for me to say no to anyone would have been against the spirit of the group, if not some actual rule. Uh, they don't have a rule, an actual rule, but. But a, a, a principle, a, a concept of inclusion. That wants to do this is equally valid, 
regardless of- So there's no artist badge I have to wear to show up. I, I don't have to sort of declare myself one type of person or another. No, whatever kind of person you want. You just sort of have to be a realist. You do have to draw what you see. You can't draw unless you actually do see aliens walking around. And actually, we have to go over here. Because what, we have an alien? We have, we have this picture by Gary Bluesit. He Johnny Bluesit, rather. He drew a security guard in horns and uh, some sort of alien spaceman in the uh, student center. And I, I thought it was done during the science fiction movie, sci-fi movie week that they do uh -huh. in Harvard. But... Uh, where people do dress up like that, but uh, that did not happen. No, that, this so there's could a be, hint. This there's... could be the <clears throat> shot from QAnon. They're uh, taking over the uh, the Smith practice, Center at Harvard, practicing this takeover. Anyway, so one of the things I did also here was um, in order to help make decisions for me, because in this particular grouping there might be eighty drawings. So how am I going to these together. And I decided that the things in the middle are the things that you would see sort of if you look straight ahead of you. Ahead of you. Um, if you look down at the flowers or the manhole covers or whatever, you would I put those drawings at the bottom and if you looked up at the treetops or the tops of very tall monuments or statues uh, or, or um, church steeples, I hung those higher. So, so stoops low, steeples high. Steeples high, shadows are low, and flowers are, are low. And again, it gave me um, unselfishly, uh, many of my drawings are of things that are on the ground or up in the air. I rarely draw something straight ahead of me because other people are doing that. So here I did look up at this one, and this is entitled Two Assholes on a Horse. Mm -hmm. That is a very modern title for a George Washington sculpture. Well, but it's appropriate. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, we're, we're cancel culture. Is that what we're doing? Are we no, we're reestablishing um, why and who gets a monument. Uh, and it's not so much about canceling, but it is about looking at history with a fresh perspective and hopefully a an understanding that America's wealth is built on free land and free labor. Yes. And yes. And so yes. anyway. And Cancel culture does exist, but I feel like that's always so much more of a social media. People who don't want to deal with nuance. Some people wouldn't understand nuance if they trip over it. And this show, since I'm bringing it back to the urban sketchers, yes, yes. is filled with nuance. And the, the slightly varied perspective of many people looking at a similar environment. Almost the same thing, Here you see the in uh, Boston drawn, these are all drawn by the Spaniard mother. Uh, meanwhile, the son was doing the, the Spaniard son was drawing the Paul Revere I was gonna say, house. that's the Paul Revere house, yes. Yeah. Uh, but this is uh, Ursula's drawing of the, of the tower. And my drawing of the tower is here and a couple of other places. It's also here. In the reflection of the car. Ah, uh, yes, yes. And then again, up high, we have the steeples, Old North Church. You even have a view way up high of the Bunker Hill Monument. Yeah. I won't be able to get that high because I'm too short. Um, but I appreciate you, that you've also hung some things low for those of us who are short. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All the flowers and the stoops you were talking yeah, about earlier. All the flowers and the stoops and the shadows and the manual <laughs> covers you can see clearly. So this is uh, Old North Church. That was the thing we were supposed to draw. Uh, you know, that was you know, come draw the Old North Church, and some of us did. And uh, 
So this is where, of course, the guide and the lanterns, one if by land, two if by sea, three if by Uber, is how that one worked. <laughs> and apparently there's someone else's ride was longer and more effective, but again, that's all part of the, oh, the, the, the history and the, you know, Paul Revere has become quite famous for his ride and it, he has a poem, yes, I think sir. by Longfellow, by right? Longfellow, <laughs> here's the Chinatown gate and here's where we will be this weekend. Oh. A few short days and we'd like to add more things to it. Um, here, this is one of my favorite views done by David, a fellow from Israel who visits his son in, who goes to school at Boston College. And whenever he shows up, uh, he draws very quickly as well. He drew the, um, the gate from the side, which mm -hmm. cracks me up. And then he also drew some of the people in Chinatown playing games and whatever they're doing. I think they're playing games on the um, dice games on the street. And here you see a photograph of one of our urban sketchers sketching with some onlookers. People really, really love oh, and then having another another tape moment. Another uh, malfunction there. Um, people love coming up to us and saying, asking what we're doing. And I think uh, I might actually figure out a way to bring this display with me this weekend and uh, put it up on a pedestal or an easel and explain what we are. So we'll see. This one was a combined group, and I wasn't planning on combining it. It's the Natural History Museum, a bunch of dead stuffed animals and fossils and stuff. And here is the Fog Art Museum, with art done by a bunch of dead artists. So there's a connection there. Stuffed animals, stuffed artists. No. Is the fog stuffy? Is the fog stuffy? This fog is kind of, the, the Natural History Museum is stuffy. You can sort of smell the dead fur and the formaldehyde. <laughs> right. So this one, this piece here, is done by a guy who added a little humorous routine here. At the Harvard Museum of Science rocks, says the fossil, which is made of rock. The seal camp, got a giggle out of that. The hippo is guffawing. Do hippos guffaw? I think that's all they do. That's all they do. They guffaw. And then, but they could hear this joke all the way over to the Museum of Science. So you, a uh, Museum of uh, Art with the fog a couple of blocks away. And you have those animals laughing. So that made me combine these two. So I have the bat next to the angel. Nice. And, uh, I like the adornment this woman has gotten to her rather large hat. Well, this is one of so this uh, I cheated is breaking the rules of urban sketchers. Rules, but I, I needed a, a break, so I took a photograph of the Gainsborough painting, and I animated uh, her hat. The lace on her hat started to lower its Venetian blinds. So, as part of this, I re, re because of this joke thing, I decided that. She also heard the joke and had to lower her, her veil uh, so she wouldn't show her yellow teeth. <laughs> laughing. She's very proper. Um, but again, there, it was really a fun thing to, to, to organize here. It's a picture of a column. And that's, you see a column right there. Maybe not the same column, but this is this. The, but there is a, you know, in collecting, these thousand and two images, some semblance of order, a through line that you're describing now is, is it's necessary because again, there's so much. So how do you organize if it? If I were to randomly put these together, just close my eyes and pick one of these out of the hat and plop it down, it would not resonate as well, I think, as it is doing. And you know, these two placed next to each other, by the same person a week later from each other. Oh. Um, and I just thought that repeating it was kind of a nice thing to do. Having this fish eye 
that fish eye and this little decoration, this little circular decoration on the sparrow was sort of a nice way of pulling those together. Now, whether anyone sees that or did you notice that? Uh, I will notice it now, but, you will notice it now. but what I have noticed, and it's so it's similar, is again sort of a, a recreation of images. So in this case here, you've got a uh, it might even be the same sculpture of the horse, but you've gathered by gathering the Natural History Museum, you've got sort of a animatronics, animals in this area. Yeah. Um, you've explained the joke, but there is a recreation of, I mean, part of it is urban sketchers. So you're always going to end up with, you know, similar, uh, similar groups scene. of people, because uh, for those of us who sketch in a cafe or an outdoor place, yeah. that's often what we see. And this, these three, uh, were done at, I think, three different times. We've been to these venues many, many times, so we, we see them again and again and again. And some people just don't go further than the front door, really. They sit right down and they're eager to draw and they draw. And so these people enjoyed drawing this the courtyard of the fog where many others of us went and drew paintings and sculpture. So this was an interesting thing, though. I was asking someone that was here the other day. We're not allowed by our rules to draw from a photograph. So I was wondering if urban sketchers existed before the advent of photography and we went to a museum and drew from a painting or made a drawing of a drawing with that. Is that, is that still part of the rules, right? Yeah, so they, they might have. Thou mayst not draw. Well, I would imagine, though, if the photograph was framed and hung in a gallery, could you draw from that photograph? You could draw from, I think, if you included the frame. The wall, the frame, and perhaps someone looking at it. Someone looking at it. Yeah. So here's, here's where I took a little bit of gerrymandering and I combined the north end, I'm sorry, back bay and the south end into one group. Which realtors would have a problem with, but I would imagine most people wouldn't. No, that would be. People in the South End might like being part of Back Bay, but I don't know what the Back Bay would like to be part of the South End. <laughs> Depends on their age. <laughs> and like I said, and, and it's some of those demarcations are just real estate demarcations. I mean, some of them are neighborhood, but. I, I drew some of these. I'm just, I'm talking about me because I remember being here. And I was fascinated by the uh, two styles of railing that might be next to each other at the three-story townhouse. One would have uh, ooh -la, la and one would have something very plain. But the ironworks in a lot of those back bay brick homes, uh, even though the, the banister and the railing might not be, may not be a lot, uh -huh. and it covers perhaps a little stamp of a garden or yes, the sir. entrance to a garden apartment. Sometimes they're really quite adorned. It feels like ironworks was a real thing. Yeah, it was a real thing at, at one time. Uh, but you also mentioned, you know, you're talking about, you know, uh, obviously it's your work uh, in amongst many peoples, but yeah. what I love, and this goes back to the idea of capturing the moment is that um, as you're, as we're wandering through this, you're remembering, remembering the moment, yeah. remembering the day, and it really ties into that idea of the journal, which yeah. when you have lots and lots of sketchbooks and you leaf through it, it is filled with those, those moments of remembering when. Yeah, I, when I do my sketches, I have many, many sketchbooks that I'm using all at the same time. I may pick up one that I last looked at 10 years ago, and I will remember, oh my God, I remember what was happening then I was listening to this news station and, and uh, it's it's kind of fun when people were here I had two brothers that are in urban sketchers come here when uh, they couldn't make it to the old things so they came for a private showing with their family and they were talking about being and they would both be next to each other talking about being at the cemetery or Montgomery Cemetery or, or Harvard Square or Chinatown Gate or whatever it was and they were talking about, oh my God, I remember when I was there, you were drawing this, weren't you? And they were, it was like, look, they were looking through the family album. And it was very, it was about being there rather than drawing there, I guess. Well, but it, it was also a, and what I love when you were talking about this yesterday, it's a shared experience. Right. 
So, you know, like leafing through the photo album. Oh, I remember when this photo was taken, but the drawings um, are that much more personal. Yeah. Um, and they take a little time. You know, even if you're a fast drawer, it takes some time to, to look, to capture. And I just love the idea of the, of the sketchbook being a, a family memento, something that is shared with more than just the person who drew it. Yeah. Well, there were many people in the, in the show here that didn't really, they were very skittish about having their actual sketchbook here. And not so much that they were afraid that it was going to get coffee spilled on it or people seeing it pretty real, but they were afraid of, they couldn't have it away from them. They needed to have it with them. Was, that, I, I understand they were, that, that they I finished with. They, 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 it was really sort of weird. So the back room here. Okay, so we're going into the second gallery of the gallery, the back is, room. This is uh, generally viewed as the less uh, impressive space to be hung if you had a piece in the show, but I like it because it's, it is rather intimate. So. Uh, Gustavo, who is one of our uh, urban sketchers, helped me uh, formulate some of the placement of the show. We decided to put the interiors back here. Okay. Things that are cozier, the coffee shops, the, uh, um, the markets, the jazz combo. And um, we often go to the shopping mall, the Prudential uh -huh. mall, because they have this very glass modern consumer happy uh, space that I find rather cold, but I go- Well, and you do I have up here some of your own personal view uh, on, on consumerism. Yes, who needs a rainforest? We have a mall, go shopping. Uh, spend money you don't have on stuff you don't want at the mall. It's amazing you didn't go into advertising. Don't think. Go shopping. I don't know whether <laughs> advertisers would like my take. <laughs> <laughs> perhaps, perhaps not. Perhaps not. So I was drawing this one here, and I'm standing next to this closed bank at the mall. And it was this weekend, I guess. I don't know what day it was, but it was closed. And I was, I love drawing reflections of things. So I had the reflections on the door, reflections on the windows, and some security guard came up to me and wondered what the heck I was doing, trying to figure out how to break in. <laughs> Unlocking the door via your sketchbook. Yes, my, my app, my unlock app. Uh, this is something that my, one of my neighbors, Gina, did. She was at the coffee shop with us, and she looked at this platter of banana bread. And she's a, among other things, a, a, a animator and also a comic book maker. So she made a story about the banana bread in her sketchbook. So I uh, copied, I, I took photographs of her sketchbook, but she didn't want to have people looking through all of it either. Um, so I, I made a print of it. And I must say that some of these are prints. I guess they already did see. Yeah. That. Here we are in the uh, interior, exterior, then the interior of the Cambridge Public Library. Then we magically, by gerrymandering, go to the interior, then exterior of the Boston Public Library. And this fountain with the lion head on it matched this beard <laughs> of the other guy and I thought that was sort of fun. Now whether you or other people see that is not important. I saw it. Well and again a way to try to bring order to order. a thousand and two sketches. Yes. And here are two of the thousand and it's the lady playing with their balls. <laughs> oh is, Boston. Is your, is your, is your, is your, yes oh Boston. Oh Boston. So here's three drawings by the same guy of 
copley plates and they're all very different this one is the hancock tower next to the red trinity church and this one just reminds me of something that jacques louis david might do yeah it's so yeah, dark it definitely uh, has a French Revolution the French aspect Revolution. to it. Here's, yeah. the, here's the guillotine, here's the obelisk and the Place de la Concorde, here's the cane being led up to have his head separated from his body. It's just, it's, he, he is one of the best people to capture the space around uh, a building. Um, it's not so much about the building, it's about the relationship between buildings and people space, and spaces yeah, yeah that's that, but that's sort of when you say urban sketchers that um what is urban besides you know buildings or construction but it is the space that is being built that includes humans and how humans interact with those spaces they're generally designed you know cities do not happen organically they happen by design except for boston with the cows the silly cows <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> The roads, yeah. But however, they didn't. Um, they just paved them, so that was by design too. They're like, let's keep these crazy. Let's keep these. Well, I love. You know, it must drive people that are trying to figure out how perspective works crazy because they all of the lines that recede toward the distance do recede on the horizon line, but the vanishing points are everywhere that you could possibly imagine so and i would imagine boston works very hard not to have any vanishing points whatsoever we are permanently here we are american history so again up at the top we have tall things the telephone poles down at the bottom we have a cat sleeping on the floor um, I like these domestic scenes. We've got, yeah, the we've got scenes. dishes and cars and cats and what are the things that make up our everyday lives? Shod foot and shod feet. Um, a deck of cards for solitaire. Um, it is during COVID, we were given uh, prompts because we couldn't go out and meet. Uh, we had to sort of stick around home or not go too far and draw. So our administrators gave us prompts to do. So some of them were sort of domestic. Uh, everyone has a living room. No, almost everyone. I don't know what they were. Uh, if they don't have a living room, they definitely have a kitchen sink. They have a kitchen sink. And my kitchen sink looks almost like that. In fact, that inspired me, that picture inspired me to do uh, a set of drawings. Clouds at the top. Um, this represents the leafy suburbs okay. the houses that we get back in our cars and commute. We have to get gas at the Zitgo. That very classic Boston landmark. Yes. And Historic even. The Historic. I, I, these are my drawings again. I started drawing the Sitka sign and I was drawing many of them and I thought of Hokusai's Mount Fuji series. So I thought, well, I'm going to do 36 of them, but I only managed to do about 12. So I've got another couple of dozen. Um, we ended up getting back in our cars, it's all gas, and we go back into Boston through the more industrial area. Rather than and again, all the different different styles where you've got colored pencil and crayon and ink and wash and brushes and pens. Line and value and point of view and scale. And yeah. It's all a big mix. And then we finally end up at Brick Bottom where- Where it all begins and ends here all at Brick Bottom. And, ends. and we have people's renditions of my building where I live. And lastly, almost lastly, we have this wall, which includes the brick bottom artists who, uh, during COVID, um, we went out on our own in groups of two or three to draw uh, together. So the social aspect was there. Here's Adam painting that painting. Here's Gina's painting. We're drawing of the same 
house. Here's my drawing of it. And here's me drawing. People there's drawing. Well, there's one here. There. There's, there's, Gina. there's Gina drawing the house. So, and I, I drew with uh, Martha and I drew with this young man here, Augustine, who is probably the youngest urban sketcher. Uh, he's never actually been to an urban sketch meetup. He, I've made him an honorary one because he's drawn with me. He couldn't find the sketches he did that day, but um, I included him anyway. So finally, we'll go back toward here. The column was meant to show the, uh, the prompts we did at urban sketches and what we do on our own. And quite often, sketchers don't need prompts to sketch. We're always sketching. But these are quite often uh, the prompts that we came up with. Uh, one guy loves drawing dogs, and he brought his drawings he does of dogs to the neighborhood. He would nail them up on trees appropriately for dogs so that the dogs could see their friends and neighbors. Um, this guy is taking a virtual trip, and he will be quote, cheating by the urban sketchers but, but um, a lot of rules were bent during the great sheltering. During this. So he um, is taking a virtual trip down Route 66, and doing watercolors of that. Here we have signs of the times, people wearing masks. I included these here. And then Johnny blues it. Um, loves drawing what he sees on his bike rides or walks. And he and I share the love of porta potties and traffic cones. So his drawings were up there. My drawings are down here where orange is the new book. Uh, is what's there. Here we're drawing on holidays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, and Hanukkah, and uh, shopping. I mean, this these drawings of napkins at the bottom were pointing in because they were discarded. No one needed them because we weren't having a celebration this year. So I drawing that free spot in my home. And here are two artists who get together on Zoom. They pick a museum around the world and they do a drawing. They pick an object and they both draw it. And sometimes you see well, one's work, working on paper, the other one's working and uh, you can clearly see they're drawing the same thing. In this case, though, the iPad user just drew the little owl at the bottom of the pooty here. So, so that's sort of our quick tour. And this is the table I see that is uh, generally housing books, but it seems to be housing more process. So process. we're gonna take a slight break. I'm gonna pause the recording so I can reset the camera. Okay. And um, Pierre, thank you for a great tour. Thank you. And we'll go into part two in just a second. And uh, Rick, well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll change, I'll, I'll keep it here just because I wanted to, I'll let you, I'll, I'll yammer as you get to just talk about. All right, we are back with okay. Pierre and we're now at the table in the center of the gallery, which um, has a number of books and also, Part of your process, the cutting board, uh, tape, lots of scraps of things. Um, I am still in the process of putting together my personal part of the show. And it's not things that people can see because I'm not going to show the stuff that some, some of them is here on the table. But I, in order to find the things I wanted to show, I all this other stuff. So I'm using, taking this opportunity to do some spring cleaning and spring organization. So, um, but this table, and the chair and the end tables that are used in this gallery at this time were chosen specifically because uh, the people that own them wanted to throw them out or get rid of them and I figured I could use them to create a more homey, casual 
appeal to the gallery rather than a cold white cubicle. Yes. Which has its place sometimes when you're, you know, showing the the fine arts or uh, again, but I, I like the table and the chairs. That does make it comfortable. It does make it homey. Sit down and you, it's it's very cozy. We used this system one previous time for a sketchbook show. People loved it then, and they won't want to do it again because it did invite people to relax and sit down and spend some time looking through things. So on this table, I do have sketchbooks that people did allow us to look through. And I'll show you a few of them just because. Uh, um, so one woman gave me these two sketchbooks and she has traveled everywhere. I, I did, you know, she had them open to a particular page and I was, that was about all I wanted to show. And I had this actually mounted on the wall open. And I love the little comment here. And it says, too much OMG, too much detail, so many spheres. Good thing we aren't architects. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, I, I included, I really wanted to have her, her her sketchbooks leaf through a bowl because also not only does she go all these to all these places, but she draws in many, many different styles, black and white, some kind of more abstract, to very detailed, too many spheres, not enough spheres. You know, there's just it's really people, really places. Well, and I always find that it, it's so often the style is affected by the tools that I've brought with me you know yes. if i've got crayons then the sketchbook is going to look one way if i've got a pen it looks another way and i do that too I, I sometimes bring tools that i'm not comfortable with normally i'm, I'm, I'm okay with pencil i'm okay with pen and ink and ink wash i'm horrible with watercolors i'm not very good with even on pencils but i bring these because it allows me because I'm not doing a job for a client, I'm not doing a job for myself. I'm, doing, I'm having fun, so I'm gonna have fun drawing with, with tools that I normally don't use. So here's this quote that was being discarded here in the building, Al Held's drawings. And this is what his drawings look like. I thought, oh, come on, Al, you can do better than that. Well, no, he can't, but I can. So I took this book with me and I used this as a starting point for the cantilever bridges that are raised and lowered on these big round gear things. And there's the public of uh, the Boston Garden. And here's the Zakem Bridge and the cantilever bridges are over here. So I had fun taking this book and having two, two types of fun. I was able to draw what I saw it's also able to have fun with the original thing. With the so shapes that he had drawn. He had drawn. So this shape became my bicycle. And there's Andre and there's Howie drawing this science bridge. And um, it's really, it was fun. And this one, this. Uh, oh, this is your, this, your the dishes. I love this. This is, this is my, my, I was inspired and often inspired by people that I see here. This is one that uh, uh, Adam's painting of the dirty dishes made me think, well, I've got dirty dishes. I've got. <laughs> right, pencil. I can do that. I can do that. So here's what it looked like. And then I took off the top layer and then found the bowls underneath that and took off that layer and did another drawing. And I, then I later cut them out. But uh, so this was this is a plate that has a butterfly in it. And it wasn't a, I'm not on the butterfly diet. It was a, it's printed on the plate. Okay, it's part of the ceramic. It's part not of the like not a leftover. Food it's not item. a leftover food no. for the compost. And uh, so it went down like this until I get almost. I just couldn't get myself to actually clean the sink, so I. When I was done drawing, I dumped them all back. 
So there was no actual dish cleaning. It was a dish investigation. So one last thing I did um, for the show is outside the gallery, we have a wall that we use, usually to hang a piece or two from the gallery from the show. And I ended up just hanging framed pieces of the glass, just in the same way that I hung the work inside the gallery, just on top of each other. And overlapping, sort of a chaotic look, and people are smiling at that as well, and that's yeah, that's the things I, I if not do. frames of top of frames, but the kind of environment that I grew up in, there was no wall space. It was always yeah. framed images, dense, filled. So that's that that look I'm very familiar with. So any other questions anyone has for us? Well, this is such an exciting show, Pierre, and I know that it's all process and you're not done and you're still adding and there's a thousand and two drawings and how many artists involved? There's about 55, maybe. About 55 uh, different artists. Yeah, and I'm planning this weekend to, I've been talking with people about submitting other work because I look back at the Urban Sketchers Facebook page and their Instagram account, USK Boston. Um, uh, and I'm seeing things that were done in the, over the last four or five years. I'm thinking, God, I wish I had that in the show because not because it necessarily is better than what's here already, but it's a very different style. Right. I've had a lot of people that have just shown up one or two times and they were here on vacation or here at school and they who knows who they are I, I can't find their names they don't often in fact I didn't put any labels up on this thing sort of to emphasize the group aspect of it how the group is more important than the individual there is an index though that I have to finish that will if someone absolutely needs to find out who did that one picture, they can. But yeah, I know that's uh, as we were putting things on the website and on the, the social medias, getting the index and the list of people, wanting people to be credited, but it's, it's tough because um, one, you keep adding, but I like the emphasis of the group and the action yeah. over the individuals. Yeah, so I, that's things, a very appealing thing to me. One of the things I did when they were talking about the publicity for the show was please do not put any single image out there. Have it be part of the group. Step back. Right. So it's pictures. always it's always so a group of images. Always three or four pictures, and almost every picture here is has at least part of it covered by another picture uh, because I didn't want to have someone somehow being better or on top of things. And that didn't always work out in the scene, but um, that was part of my plan of having it all overlap. Also, if, these, if this show was hung like a regular show, I would need to have the move. Well, it. yeah, I did say you'd be at Mass Mocha filling the walls because there is a lot here. It'd also be investing in a lot of frames lot of and frames. potentially glass if you're putting them yeah. behind glass. Yeah, it was just pinned on the wall and you separated them by 10 inches or something from each other. Then you see the one piece, and a lot of these pieces are very quiet, subtle drawings um, with just pencil or thin pen line, and it would be overwhelmed by its neighbors. So well, and it's, isn't that the nature of the, the sketch? People sketch in different ways. And uh, the intention of a sketch isn't to be isolated and, and viewed that way, but rather viewed in a book. So yeah. again, the recreation of flipping through a sketchbook is kind of what you've yeah. created with all the different images. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if you see only one image in a sketchbook at a time, you know that there's another 20 or 30 in that same book. Right. So you see it as a part of something else. 
things, right? And not just like this grand work of art, but rather, again, about process, about um, the eye and the hand. I mean, that's always what gets me about sketching, mm -hmm. that it's always about the eye and the hand. Yeah, they're very much about, well, for me, sketching is different from drawing and that's different from rendering. And I think if I had to classify these, some of them would be drawings and some would be rendering. Some of them are more carefully done, more polished and more finished, where to me, sketches, almost all of my sketches are really loosey-goosey and they're sort of meant to capture something really, really quickly. And then I go on to the second one. And the ones that I, with the exception of one person, I framed my work here. And part of it was, um, I have a lot of frames I wanted to use up, but part of it also was the many of the ones that I framed and that I framed rather opulently are drawings that you wonder, well, why did he bother to frame that? It's just the shadow of some statue on the grass or uh -huh. something. But also, I framed the collages I put together because uh, I draw 10 or 12 pictures at a time and I want them seen as a group grouping that I did at that time. So you sort of, in my mind, you have to see all of them. Right. Because that was what I did that day was to do. Right. The, the, well, it sort of goes in with like, uh, you know, to Gina making the, um, the book and her work with animation. There's something about a sketchbook that implies sequence. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't just sit down to do a drawing. You might do different perspectives, different sketch. So there is something about time again, yeah. capturing the moment and capturing multiple moments. Multiple moments of, a, of, uh, of you being there, wherever there is. And well, and it breaks it. through that idea, particularly in an urban environment, that an edifice or a, uh, a square is static, mm -hmm. but that they are dynamic and they do change, whether it's the light or the people or the animals or the plants, They're, it's, mm -hmm. it's a dynamic site. Yeah. And that's part of, I would imagine. So what's the Urban Sketchers on um, Instagram? Instagram, it's USK Boston. USK Boston. But you okay. can also search, um, uh, and, and the Facebook page is Urban Sketchers Boston. Urban Sketchers Boston. But, you, okay. but there are dozens and dozens of sister or brother urban sketcher groups throughout the world. And when I go to Minneapolis, I, I go with them at Urban Sketchers Minneapolis. And when I go to uh, Urban Sketchers Twin Cities, sorry. And when I go to uh, Philadelphia and Baltimore, I, I uh, find out if they're having a meetup when I'm there and I'll join them. And we, uh, so if you wanna see whether there is a Urban Sketchers in your fair city, um, you can go to urbansketchers.org and, and find a chapter near you. Uh, there are fewer chapters than you would expect because one of the rules is you have to get at least 20 people interested in, in having one because they want to have a core group that they can count on to make it worth the while of the administrators who are local to that group. Okay. You, wanna, you would get burned out if you tried to schedule things. No one, no one comes. No one would yep. show up. So they, they want to make sure that there's a number of people there first before before allowing you the, uh, the, the use of their name. Okay, so Urban Sketchers is local, it's across the country, it has, does have rules, across and you can world. find it on, across the world, and you can find it on the social media, and in our very own little Brick Bottom Gallery here at Brick Bottom. Yes, you can see the world 1,001 drawings at a time. That should be the new motto. That's my motto. I like that motto. Okay. All right. Well, I'd like to thank everyone and Pierre. Thank you so much well, for chatting this morning. And uh, we'll see. We'll see if it can give it life on the YouTube. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you. See you. Thank you, Charles. Bye. Yeah.